Hi everyone, this is Tony. I'm the Dungeon Master for D&D Raw, and with me today are the following players. Hi, I'm Chris, and I'll be playing Orc Fireforge, the Hill Dwarf Forge Cleric. Hey, I'm Rachel, and I'm playing Dahlia Restrick, the Asimar Phoenix Sorcerer. Hey, this is Nick, and I will be playing Livin Cromdell, the Half-Elf Alchemist Artificer. Next week will be an NPC story on Boulder. Join us now for Rumble Squad, Episode 2-3. The Strength of the Mountain. Last time. Having completed their downtime, the party travels to the plane of elemental earth in order to acquire the soul of the earth, an artifact Auric is hoping to use in the creation of a hammer for Yadumin. As they step through, the party encounters a dizzying array of caverns, as well as elemental beasts that come and attack them. We're no longer in initiative. Whew! Wow! Those were things, guys. Maybe we should not fight some of those again. I don't know. What about you? Yeah, I'm all for being able to actually see. Yeah. How are both of you on your health? I didn't take any hits, and the blur around me eventually fades. I've got a couple, like, scratches. I've got, like, a bite mark. I'm like, I mean, this is probably the worst I've been in a while. Or ever. Here, let me help you. I will cast Cure Wounds on her. Seven healing. Thank you. And I'm, like, cleaning off the dirt. Dahlia. Welcome to Rumble Squad. I like it. I get to burn things. So, Dahlia, when you peered down below, you caught a brief glimpse of this, but you thought you saw somewhere far, far down a gem of some sort. What color gem? Looks like kind of a clearish bluish gem somewhere far below you. But considering that you're looking kind of along the ledge a little bit and looking down, that's hundreds of feet down. But considering how well you can kind of see it from this distance, that is a massive gem or series of gems. And you occasionally see like little glints of light kind of emit from somewhere within the gem. It's hard to tell more from this distance. Boulder did say there was a shiny city. He said we should probably not go to the shiny city. But I'm going to like tug on Luvin's sleeve and be like, does that look like a shiny city to you? Or does that just look like a really big really big gem. I'll glance over the edge. Orc, as you kind of peer down with your superior dwarven eyes, this must be massive gems, because you can clearly see definition in their shapes. And considering that every so often you see a small little bit of, like, coloration from some light source within, those are probably gem buildings. Aye, it seems like it's a good candidate to be this gem city. Okay, I guess we won't be going there, because they may not be the friendliest. And I don't think that your shiny swords, even if they do smell like strawberries, are going to be worth that. No, I agree. Our welcome already has been pretty hostile. Let's just keep going down the quickest route to victory. Yeah, we were warned that there would be creatures that would be more keen on attacking than talking. Yeah, I think we found them. Oh, yeah. So, and I'll go over and pick back up the rope. Continuing on? You guys press on, continuing upwards along the path, going for several minutes, till eventually it seems to curve up into this smaller tunnel that extends about ten feet. As you come across this point, you see plate armor leaning against a small archway that's about fifteen feet from you. So it's laying out in front of us? It's almost like it's just standing up, but just leaning against the archway. It just seems to be floating there. We should proceed with caution. This could be another enemy, or a guardian of some sort. Yes, guardians. As soon as you take the first step into this little, smaller 15 foot long tunnel, earth comes up from out of the ground and fills in the plate as this earthen elemental kind of comes up and seems to form in its hand a maul which it plants the head of on the ground and stares towards all of you as it goes. Hey, hey, 
Oric, use that thing you said that we could understand things. I'll cast tongues. You cast... It seems to be waiting for a response from you at the current point. Could you repeat that, please? This thing turns to you. You come to seek the power that is Zaraton. I, I come to seek the power that is Zaraton. Do you come to seek the strength of the mountain to help bind yourself to strengthen yourself? I come to seek the soul of the earth. Its head kind of like shifts back. By the way, you're only hearing Oryx side of this. All the rest of you are hearing is just a grinding stone sound. Do you have the strength of determination of heart to get past me? I, I believe I do. So what does his armor look like? Looks like plate. Like how nice a plate? Pretty nice. Not magical. Does it look like he maintains it? Looks like it. Well, I know a thing or two about armor. It looks like you have some fairly good stuff. I could help improve it and polish it up for you if you wish. I am the guardian of the entrance way. I am the first challenge. Get past me, and you may see Zaratan. Aye, and what a statement you would make with so much shinier armor. I am the creation of Zaratan. I care not for this armor, save that it protects me. Very well. Do you accept the first challenge? I do. What are you doing, Oric? You do what? It starts to walk up and stands in the dead center of this tunnel. Right behind it, it's about ten feet to this open cavern archway that immediately seems to curve off to the left, so you only see the path that starts to curve. You are ten feet from it as it stands picks up its maul and puts it over its shoulder and just goes, then get past me. So as this elemental plants his feet and heaves his maul onto his shoulders, the ground for a brief second around him in this narrow 30 foot tunnel seems to like shift, but you're not quite sure how. It just seems to have like a glimmering heat almost effect of a shimmer across it for a moment. I would like you all to roll initiative. So, top of the round, Dahlia. Look over at Orc. What challenge? What are we doing? What's happening? And I am like starting a small fire in my hand. We have to get past him. Oh, that's it? Okay, I'm going to cast Suggestion on him. Let us walk past. And I'm confident, so I'm going to start walking up. The magic was released. As soon as you step on, it feels like you're walking in mud. It is difficult terrain. You don't see mud, but it feels like it. And as you kind of Pick your feet up, they suction to the ground. All right, so I can get... Right next to him. Why is the floor so sticky? As you do that, a boulder from the back wall flies straight at you. I need you to make a dexterity saving throw. Nat 20. All right, so this boulder flies past you as you duck, and it just barely misses you flying straight across. And as it seems to pass by the edge of the tunnel, it just dissipates into nothing and dust. Seems like the magic is containing it within this area. But you are right next to him. You can walk past. Go on. Walk past. Because I think it worked. I have no idea. Then that brings us to you, Auric. I am going to move forward. Okay. You also feel this suction. You look down, and there's no mud there, but it feels like your feet are, like, partially being held by the ground. And as soon as you get to the other side of this elemental, a rock shoots out of the wall straight at you. Make a deck save. Four. As this thing slams into you, you take 12 points of bludgeoning damage and are shoved back and knocked prone. You feel your back kind of suction to the ground a little bit. Still can move, but you are prone from the sheer force of this rock slamming into you. I'll cast Cure Wounds on myself. Armor definitely took that hit. It hurt, but you place your hand on your chest and you feel the bruising kind of start to ease up. And I heal 11 points. Then it is its turn, and he is going to reach his free hand out towards you, Dahlia. I need you to make an acrobatics or athletics check. I'm going to go with acrobatics. That's a nat one for a total of one. As you kind of beautifully dodge that rock, you're starting to get up, and an almost iron-like grip wraps around your arm and just holds you. I don't think it worked. You are grappled, no damage, but your speed is zero as of right now. With his other move, he is going to 
swing his maul down at you, Orc. So this maul swings down and slams into you, dealing 10 points of bludgeoning damage. And then I will use my reaction to activate the repulsion. As he slams onto your shoulder, Auric, you swing the shield as it releases a pulse of energy, thrusting him back into the wall five feet away from you. Cracks against the wall. He's still holding Dahlia, who kind of like jerks forward slightly. What the heck, Auric? <laughs> yes, it worked. But that is his turn. That does bring us to you, Luba. I have a flying elixir, so I'm going to drink that now. You can just hover above the ground. Low ceiling, but I can hover. Yeah, cool. I am going to use my 10-foot fly speed to move forward, and then I will dash to move 10 more feet. You're moving straight ahead? Yes. As you move to 15 feet, make a dexterity saving throw as another rock shoots out from the wall at you. 16? All right, so a rock shoots out of the wall, and you're more prepared for it, and you kind of hug the left side as it flies past you. And then you can move an additional five feet, so you can get to within 10 feet of the end of the tunnel. Awesome. Come on, Cloudfarer. Cloudfarer can move its movement. Actually, is it falling right behind you? Yes, but eventually passes me. So I need you to make a deck save first, because the rock is coming straight from the wall now at you as Cloudfarer passes this point. Uh, natural 20, 23. You lift your legs up and, like, hug the ceiling as it flies underneath you, and I need Cloudfarer to make a deck save as well. Total of six. So Cloudfarer takes nine points of bludgeoning damage. As it's hit, he's knocked out of the sky and falls like on Auric. Oh, hello. What was his total movement? 30. Basically, he can get back up in the air. Okay, we'll do that. So he's hovering above you, Auric, now. That brings us back to you, Dahlia. So obviously, it didn't work the first time. It's gonna work this time. So I have to say it in something that I think he would understand. I'm gonna go with Dwarven. So suggestion, casting it on him again. So you guys would both understand me as I'm like, release me and let us pass, please. So you cast the spell. He doesn't let go. That brings us back to you, Orc. So it's half my movement to stand up, is it? So you have 15 more feet. So I think I can only move forward one because it's still difficult terrain. It is. Luven, make a deck saving throw. That's another nat 20, total 23. Still hugging that ceiling, Luvin. Good job. Auric, make a deck save. 13. This rock flies towards you. You bring your shield up, and it deflects off your shield towards the wall as it crumbles into nothingness. I'll go ahead and do a cure wounds on myself again. So, again, you touch that shoulder that got slammed by the maul and heal up a little. Heal up nine points. It's the Myrmidon's turn. As he's holding my hand. Yeah, he's actually going to drag you closer to that tunnel opening. Okay. He kind of gestures his maul out, and it seems to swirl like the actual stone shifts, and he swings at Leuven. So that's going to hit. So first, you take a total of 36 points of damage. Oh! And I need you to make a strength saving throw. It's a 10 total. As this thing shifts, it smacks you. feel this pressure from the hit, and then a pulse rings out in your gut as it shoves you kind of back, almost hitting Auric, and you fall to the ground, prone. But my draw would still be active for the purposes of continuing to fly when I get back up. Yes. So if you get back up, you're hovering. Luvin, you're up. Return to flying. You are up. As a bonus action, I'm going to cast Healing Word on myself. And it'll be a plus four to that due to my uh, alchemical savant. Nine total. So Mending has special properties with Cloudfarer. The homunculus regains 2d6 hit points if the Mending spell is cast on it. Okay, go ahead and roll 2d6. That is seven back. Okay. I'm going to move. You get to the tunnel. You have not pulled away from him yet, though. Cloudfarer, come, but from the right. Okay, make a deck saving throw. Eleven. Rock shoots out from the wall. Cloudfarer skims its little talons on the top as it barely flies over it, and it flies past it. Oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> okay, continue moving. Good job. He can get basically to you, because he's a tiny creature. He can go in your space. You're both right behind this thing. Dahlia. I will use my acrobats to try to break out. A 19! After, like, causing that slam of thunderous energy, you see Leuven kind of, like, 
moving past him, and he turns to like keep his gaze on Leuven, and you pull your arm out of his grasp. So I have some movement, but I can't get into the tunnel. Uh, it would be an acrobatics check to try and squeeze past Leuven and this thing. I'll try it. Okay. Nine. You go to kind of shove your way through and squeeze, but you get kind of shoved back by this elemental. Mantle flame. Just whoosh, go up in flames as I'm getting annoyed. Dahlia shifts off to the side, tries to squeeze through, and in frustration, her body ignites. As fire swirls around her, flames seem to lick off her shoulders, giving you kind of a thought of wings almost, and her eyes turn like to almost coal-like as flames completely cover her. Her red hair seems to literally turn to fire. That brings us to you, Auric. I am going to move up next to the guy. Okay, so you don't have enough movement to get past Leuven, sadly. So you would actually be unable to, unless you attempt to dash as an action. Yeah, I'll attempt to do that. Okay, make an acrobatics check to squeeze through this. 17. You go and squeeze past your armor scraping against the wall and part of this thing's body. As it swings, you bring your shield up and deflect it partially as it slams into the wall, narrowly also missing Leuven. As you slip past Leuven and Leuven, from your perspective, Oryx steps into the tunnel and disappears. Now it's its turn. Leuven, I need you to make an athletics or acrobatics check. Twelve. It grabs you, Leuven, and as part of its movement, it's going to pull you back and away from the entrance. Ah. Oh. And then it's going to swing at Dahlia. So it swings and misses. That brings us to you, Leuven. You are currently grappled. Your speed is zero. I'm going to try to break out of it. Okay. Fifteen. He crit. So you are held in place. So I have a bonus action left. Cloudfarer attack. <laughs> Make an attack roll with Cloudfarer. Sixteen to hit. You fire and it deflects off the plate to no effect. Dahlia. Buddy, just, I tried to be nice. Firebolt. Make your attack roll. Ten. You fire to no effect. Just gonna move up to be ready to, like, move out of the tunnel. Auric, you step into a tunnel, look behind you, and there is a rock wall behind you. But the tunnel seems to continue to proceed upwards. Can I, like, put my hand on the back tunnel and see if it's, like, just an illusion? You put your hand, and Dahlia, someone is touching you. Can I pull Dahlia through? You can certainly try. All right. I will attempt to do so. Dahlia, do you resist? Yes. Sorry. I'm not leaving my cousin behind. Make an athletics check versus Dahlia's athletics or acrobatics. Acrobatics. <laughs> you come up with me. However. I guess I am touching her. Oh, yeah. You take how much damage? Four points of fire damage. It's half because of your fire resistance. Yep. So two. So you take two points of fire damage as you... Grab Dahlia and pull her through the barrier. Luvin, you watch as Dahlia seems to be yanked back and disappears. Or your hand hurts a little bit from the burn. That was your action and like 10 feet of movement because you had to pull her back basically into your space. Can I move back into the area where Luvin is? Okay. And then do I see Luvin there? You see him being held, yes. I will use my bonus action to do a healing word. So go ahead and roll your healing word. Heals five damage. Okay, Luvin, you heal up by five as Auric steps back into visibility and speaks a word of healing towards you. It's its turn it is going to first swing at the target that just presented itself to him. 23 for 13 points of bludgeoning damage. And he's getting bonked backwards. Luvin, for the sake of this, make a strength saving throw. 21. So I am going to say from the sheer force of this, you're going to take two points of like slashing tearing damage as this stone hand tears across your arm briefly, but you are not currently grappled. He then steps back up and uses his second attack to try and grab you again. So roll acrobatics or athletics. Not one. So he reaches out and he does grab your arm again. It is your turn, Lubin. Let's try this new thing. And I pull out my, you know, alchemical tools and, and do some motions and some magical swirls happen. And suddenly I seem to be moving a bit faster. 
I use enhance ability, specifically the cat's grace portion of it. So you see as Leuven almost looks more toned? Cloudfarer attack. Make an attack roll with Cloudfarer. The attack is a crit for a total of six force damage. As a pulse goes out, it cracks into the stone, chips it. Dahlia. So the problem is I don't know that Auric is right there on the other side. If you start to use any movement, you will tell. I'll bump into him. Can I just like look through and then look over him? Because I'm taller than him? Yes. All right. So I'm going to do that cursing in Dwarven over his head. So I know he understands. I'm casting magic missile at him. Roll your damage. Four, four, and five. So 13 damage? Yeah. You just slam it into the spot that Cloudfarer had hit. More chunks of stone fall from his shoulder. And I'm like, I tried playing nice. Orc. It's athletics if I wanted to push him back. Yes. Now, would that, like, free his grip on Leuven? I will allow you to attempt to just break his grip with an athletics check. I want to do that. So you have to move up to him and make an athletics check. 18. You reach out, grab his hand, have your shield, and, like, bash towards the arm. And just with a quick shove, the grip is broken. Ah! (laughs) Nice. Leuven, you are in the opening with Oryx still kind of holding on to you. I will cast Healing Word uh, at second level for seven points. All right, so Leuven, you're healed up by seven. As this elemental moves up, it's going to reach out and try and grab you, Leuven. Make an acrobatics check. Six. Doesn't matter, he nat one. Oh, yeah! (laughs) Thank you. So he reaches out, and you slip out of the way. He's going to try one more time, because he gets two attacks. So acrobatics check. Ten. Do you know what happens when you both roll the same number on an opposed check? No. The status quo remains. Oh. Which means... (sighs) Not grappled. You are not grappled. Oh my gosh. Leuven. I am going to action disengage. I'm not sure if that matters, but... Not for Sentinel, it doesn't. Which means it's all based off of this next attack roll I'm making. He swings. As he swings, Leuven, you lift your shield and deflect the blow. And as your foot steps across the threshold, you see his form sinks into the earth and fade. Hey guys, we might need a breather. That'd be a little rough. What is the plan, guys? What is our best estimate of time of day? No idea. You are underground. What are we looking at? Just a path that goes up? So currently you are looking at a tunnel that seems to go at about a 30 degree incline or so upwards. As soon as I start dropping the mantle, I'm actually going to draw my dagger, like cast the cantrip light on it. So you guys have a light source. That guy was not very nice. I asked. You guys heard. I asked very nicely. He didn't listen. He's not following us, is he, Leuven? No, no. Sinking into the ground, I think. I think we're done. We passed the challenge. Did all of him sink into the ground? I didn't have time to see. I'm going to stand between Orc and the fake wall. Like, no. I'm pretty tired. I don't have a lot of magic left in me. Are you both tired? I... Yes. Are you guys taking a short rest? I'm advocating for a long rest. I would advocate for a long rest as well. Yes, the air is thin here. It might only get thinner, which would mean a long rest later. On top of being already depleted going into whatever we're facing next would probably be more problematic. All right. So long rest, guys. All right. So you guys are able to take a long rest, at the end of which I would like all of you to make a constitution saving throw. 24. 13. 20. Though the air is thin, none of you suffer any repercussions of sleeping in this oxygen light environment. You all made the save. You all gain the benefits of a long rest. You're all healed up. Spells are back. Abilities are back. It is not dawn yet. And the only reason you know that is, Auric, you're realizing your shield's energy has not recharged. So currently, you are in a narrow tunnel that extends upwards beyond your current line of sight, even with the light source right now. I would hold out a hand to Orc and be like, after you, dwarf, this is your realm. I reminds me of home. I'll take the lead. You begin the trek upwards, 
Cloudfarer resting comfortably on Luvin's shoulder. I occasionally pat it. Continue up and up and up and up till eventually you come across another ledge. Or you have lived in mountains most of your life. The way that this tunnel was, the way that you notice as you're coming out and noticing the curvature of the rock walls on either side of this entranceway almost feels like you should be outside. But as you stare upwards, the rock walls across and around you seem to just continue to go up. You see no semblance of sky, yet feel like there should be. This almost seems like you're walking along the outskirts of a mountain. And yet, from all your perception, it looks like you're still inside. The one thing that catches your attention, though, as you start to glance around this large open space with this ledge that extends off to your left, is you notice a much larger landing with a sheer cliff. And standing just in front of that cliff wall is a 28-foot tall figure. Almost stone-like skin, very gray, bald head, simple clothing, who has his eyes just closed. All of you can roll a nature check for me. Nine. Nat one, total five. 16 total. That's a stone giant. Giants, you know, are incredibly rare on the material plane due to their civilizations basically being utterly wiped out thousands of years ago. You know they exist on other planes, all the various types of giants. Stone giants tend to be more of a meditative, peaceful kind. I'd probably just kind of sidle up and be like, oh, if this is next challenge, I think we're going to be okay. Stone giants are pretty chill. They're kind of like your friend Elaine, just very like mellow and bolder. Yeah, more like bolder, less like Elaine. Oh, that's perfect. This stone giant in particular is not bulky, but like kind of lanky and just is standing there, eyes closed, kind of like one hand in front of the other crossed in front of himself. Just seems to be patiently sitting there. Before we go, Orc, you should probably do that thing for the the understanding thing. Well, he may speak Dwarvish. We can do it if he doesn't seem to understand us. Okay. Should we try and sneak past, maybe? Kind of lightly tap your metal armor that goes clunk, 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 clunk all the time. Like, no. Mine's quieter now, at least. Ka-chunk. Ka-chunk. Just because you say it quieter doesn't make your armor quieter. We've managed it before, it's just not guaranteed. Here's the other thing. If it is a challenge, and we just walk past it, what if the dude that we're going to see doesn't recognize that we've passed all three because we bypassed it by walking past it? To be fair, our last challenge was literally to walk past the guy. I know, and none of you did. You tried to fight him. No, I actually managed. I didn't attack him at all. Okay, I might have attacked him a couple times. So I think we should walk up just casually, like, we know what we're doing. I mean, we know why we're here. I'm sure he's going to wake up anyways. He's probably already awake. He probably can hear us. Only Auric notices this. When Dahlia says he probably already, like, has noticed us, you see the corners of the giant's mouth twitch. Like, as a smile. I we've been made. How do you know? His eyes still haven't opened. My superior dwarven eyes, I can see he is noticed our presence. You still want to sneak? No, there's no point at this point. Also, I think he actually understands us as well. Oh, that's good. Slight mouth twitch again. Well, hello, friend. And I wave. (laughs) So you wave as you're going up to him? Yes. He just kind of slowly opens his eyes. Challengers, yes. That would be us. He does a polite nod. And gestures towards the wall behind him. And up. So what is this challenge now? His gesture remains to the wall behind him and up. I think he wants us to get up. And are you going to be impeding our climb? He shakes his head. Is anything else going to be attacking us while we're trying to climb? Shakes his head. It's just a climb? No, it's... Can we insight? Go for it. Insight was 22. What are you attempting to discern? If he, like, secretly has a smirk, you're like, Haha, these suckers are going to get blasted off the wall. There's no hostile intent in him. There's nothing that indicates that he's being sneaky in any way. How high up is the wall? Make a perception check. 
four. I mean, even with your light source on your dagger, that range is maybe, you know, between 30 to 60 feet of light. It seems to extend beyond that. Can I look with my superior dwarven eyes to see? You can attempt. Luvin can as well, if you want. 25? That would be another nat one. Total two. Luvin, you're still contemplating? Why is there no sky? Yeah, just like, how would this work with, with painting and like where, where the foreground versus the mid and back? I just... Luvin, you're thinking out loud again. Oh, sorry. It's fine. It's just not relevant. How tall is the wall? Can you see? No. Auric, with your 25, that's probably about a 200 foot climb. I'd say that's about a 200 foot climb. In terms of handholds, uh, is it like just a 90 degree straight up, pretty flat surface? More or less, there's like a slight concave curvature to it, like very slight. So I'm going to walk up to the wall, and then I'm just going to reach out and start feeling all along the wall, like basically seeing if any of it is fake. Make an investigation check. That's a 19 total. That is solid stone. Yep, it's solid. I do look up to the stone giant. So I'm going to guess flying would be against the rules of the challenge. Does not make any gesture one way or the other. Uh Uh-huh. What is your name? Gestures back towards the wall. Are there penalties for flying or do we have to climb? There could be obstacles when flying. I see. All right. I think we all need to stay close. If one of us falls, I got something for that. We should just try and do this. Do any of you have any kind of climbing gear? Nope, not at all. Just these. Hold up my hands. I would use my message spell and ask Luvin, should I try to convince him harder to help us? Well, I think you made a good point earlier that we should try and do these challenges roughly by the book or else someone might not like that. Is there a time limit for climbing this? He is gesturing towards the wall. His hand has not moved from... Gesturing, kind of like open palm up. Like go? Like, yeah, go. So I turn to Dahlia and I hand you a vial of hot pink liquid. This will help you out for one minute if you're in some trouble. And I explain in greater detail. It is a vial of boldness. I will secure it to my person somehow. (laughs) He's holding his hand up, right? He's just like offering it up. I kind of want to try climbing him. Okay. Talia, what are you doing? Hold on, I'm trying something. Make an athletics check. That's a nat 20 for a total of 19. (laughs) So you kind of grab onto his knee, lift, put a hand on his thigh, and, like, the fabric that's there. Because he's got, like, these thin, kind of rough leather pants. Push up, and he doesn't move. You climb and wrap an arm around his shoulder, clamber up get up to his hand, which is outstretched, and you can literally stand on his hand. How close is it to the wall? His hand is right next to the wall. I'm going to reach out and try to touch the wall there and see if it's still real. Still real. Yell down to them, it's still real up here, so we have to climb at least this high. What were you thinking? Look, I'm 28 feet higher than you are, so... I was going to say, if you want to give me an hour, I can make a harness that we can use to attach to each other. And then, in case one of us falls, we can pull you back up. I'm going to point to Leuven. He has a thing. The fall thing. I That just keeps you from dying, but you won't be able to get back up to us. Pros and cons, though, right? Because if one of us falls, it could cause both the others of us to fall if we don't pull hard enough. This is why we all stay close, because feather fall could apply to multiple of us at once. Have you never been climbing before? I am a dwarf. We're familiar with this roll up my sleeves to show my little noodle arms. Do I look like a climber? I'm gonna look down, you know, because I'm standing on his hand, to my new best stone giant friend. We have a great sword that smells like bananas. Would you be interested in the great sword in exchange for a ride? Roll a persuasion check. 18 total. One of you. Or it canned over that great sword. How much rope do you have, Luvin? And how much rope do you have, Dahlia? Fifty. Fifty. And I have another fifty. We could come up with some additional rope, or I could lower it down or limit how high you have to climb, and then pull you up. I'm already up here. Can you pull us up? Nope, but I can stake a pitten into the ground. 
and drop the rope to you. But that doesn't pull us up. I thought that's what your strong dwarven arms were for. Should I help you all get started? That would be nice as well. Also, the sword doesn't have to smell like bananas. It can also smell like strawberries or dirt. Dirt is a nice smell. I do enjoy it. Give it that wonderful sapphire smell. Sapphire has the most delicious smell, but amethyst is my preference. I might be able to pull that one off as well. Still a slight smile. Assist? How would you assist us? I would help you get part way up. Let's do that, and then that way we all start from the same place that puts us in the best possible positioning. I assist without the harness, or you start with the harness. Seems only fair. How high can you get us with your assist? One way to find out. Would you like me to show you? He'll lower you down a little bit, Dahlia. I would sadly step off. <laughs> Go over to a corner. Take a rock. Look up. Oh, no. Underhand hurls it up. Stands underneath it. You see it go 30, 60, 100, slowly drops, 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 and he catches in one hand. Let's take the assist. We can still tether ourselves together with rope. Hold on. You guys are missing one fact. How are we going to, like, and I'm going to, like, make a motion of, like, grabbing onto the rock? I assume he kind of asks you all to step to the side a little bit. He'll step all the way back to the far ledge, run, and leap. And you see he clears like 120 feet up and his fingers grab the wall and he jerks down about 10, 20 feet before catching himself. And then he looks down at all of you. Can you not hold? Hold up one noodle arm again. And this is why we use the rope. That's also why I gave you that vial. Oh, this is not going to go well, but I like it. He gestures for you to stay where you are as he lets go and like heavily hits the ground. You all lift up like five feet from the impact and the force of the landing before coming to like rest back onto your feet. I mean, I'm not opposed to this idea. I don't know that it's a great idea, but I don't think it's the worst one we could have. Uh, well, at least it'll get us part way up. But we should definitely tie the rope to ourselves to keep us together. That could make the throw more difficult. Question. Very nice giant. Would you catch us if we didn't grab? Or are you going to let us splat? This is the challenge. One way to find out. And there's like a slight, like, smirk. I'm going to hold out my hand to Auric. The great sword, please? I'll pull out the great sword from the bag of holding and hand it over. I press the digitation to... I'm going to take a guess at what I think amethyst smells like. Sure. And then I'm going to... Like, do the fancy where you, like, hold it out on two hands and, like, kind of bow a little, like, hold it out and up to him. He reaches down, two fingers, picks it up by the handle. Hmm. <laughs> pleasant smell. To him, it looks like a dagger in his hand. Kind of tucks it into his belt. All right. I'm not tying myself. Or are we tying ourselves? I'm going to trust our expert friend here, and I, I gestured toward the giant, who says it would be a bad idea. He... Puts two hands on the ground. I'm going to take my 50 foot of hemp and rope, and I'm actually going to wind it around like my mid-center. So I have it you know, accessible, and then get ready to go, because this is a terribly awesome idea. <laughs> I also will tie the rope around and have my pittons out at least three, and I made sure Dahlia had at least three, and I give Auric three. And right as I am walking onto the hand to be lifted up, I will cast on myself... Enhance ability, but this time it will be the bowl's strength. I would like to chug that potion of boldness. I will cast guidance on myself. So we have Auric in one hand, Dolly in the other, Luvin waiting on the shoulder as he stands back up. His hand goes low for Dahlia. You see him kind of take a couple steps back, do a little juke forward, and hurl you straight up, Dahlia, followed very quickly by Auric right behind. He kind of is lowering his arm a little bit, Luvin, so you can quickly get onto his hand. I assume you do. And you are third in line. You hurl up 50, 100, 120 at its apex. You feel yourself slowing. Trying to grab the wall. Uh, Pitten, stab into the wall. Okay, Pitten's out. Stab into the wall. Auric. Pitten. Luvin. Pitten, stab. Here we go. I need... Strength saving throws from all of you. Three. 
14. Natural 20, total 22. Luvin, as you leap up, you see your two companions above you, about 10 feet, and you shove both pittons into the wall, and they stick to something hard in the wall, and you, your arms jerk, you feel your shoulders tight, and that hurt, but you are pinned at 110 feet up. You look up as Auric slams both pittons in, drops like five feet, he's five feet above you. Dahlia slams the pittons in, and they bounce off the stone wall as she is falling. Featherfall. Dahlia, you slow. 60 feet suddenly, you drop. Make a strength check. 12. So you sink the pittons in. You're moving at a much slower rate. You did drop now 50 feet below the rest of your party. You sink about another 5 feet, but you're currently attached to the wall with your pittons. Auric, Luvin, you're like almost on top of each other. Thanks, Luvin! <laughs> you hear a little cry from below. <laughs> Should have tied us together. Dahlia, climb back up toward us. We need to stay together. Dahlia, make an athletics check. Eight total. You get like five feet before your arms are like shaking. Luvin, if we get to the top, we can lower down a rope to her. I should stay in range in case I need to cast that again, but I can give you my rope. So, Auric, you climbing up? Yes. Make an athletics check for me. Would it be easy to hand the rope over? I did have it tied around me. Easy? No. <laughs> Go ahead and make an athletics check, Luvin. To maintain your hold on the wall while handing over the rope. Eleven. Luvin starts to hand over the rope to Yorick. You reach out and you grab it. Luvin, the pit in your holding, skids five feet down. But Oric has the rope. Okay. Total of five. Oric, you pull a pitten out, jam it into the wall, have it set, pull a pitten out, the other one shakes free and you start to fall. A feather fall. Make another athletics check to grab the wall because of Featherfall. 16. You slam both pit into the wall and hold. What's up, Dahlia? So is it the same height as me? Yep. Dahlia, do you, you want to tie yourself to me this time? Mm, after what you just did, I'm thinking we have equal chance. You hear some scraping of stone below you, and you see the stone giant, like, grabbing handholds to the side of you, slightly still beneath you, and just looks up and goes, Is everyone all right? Sure. Yeah. Please proceed. I will be right below you. I'm going to try to start climbing again, I guess. Athletics check from Dahlia. 15. Dahlia starts to make progress. I just need to catch my breath, okay? Luvin, you're just waiting? Yeah, I want them to catch up. Okay, make a strength saving throw. Seven. You're holding, you're holding. You skid slightly five more feet. As you were shifting your grip on your pittons, you're now at 100 feet from the top. Okay, I have to keep climbing. I have to keep climbing. <laughs> How close are we to each other? Dahlia is 20 feet from Leuven now. You're 20 feet from Dahlia. Leuven is 100 feet from the top. No pressure, but I have got exactly two of those feather falls left. Then keep moving. Athletics check. 12. Leuven makes a little bit of progress. Total of 22. You are climbing up, much more sure of yourself this time. You are up by Dahlia still. Pressing on upwards. You guys keep going? Oh, yeah. Alright. Another round of athletics checks. 18 total. 9. I got a natural 20. Luvin, you're at about 110 feet up from the ground. But, like, your arms are shaking. You are not moving. Like, you can't seem to get enough strength to pull yourself further right now. Dahlia, you're making progress. You're getting closer. By this point, you're at about 100 feet. You're 10 feet below Leuven. Auric, you get all the way up to, like, basically right between Dahlia and Leuven. You actually pass Dahlia. You see the stone giant below you? Comes 30 feet below you. And it's just looking upwards. Anything special? Just keep going. Just keep going. Okay, athletics checks all around. Five. Nine. Twenty. Leuven starts to make really good progress. Finds that inner strength. Pulls himself higher. Higher, higher. You are 30 feet away from the top. You are getting so close. You look down. Oryx's not moving, and Dahlia just slid about five feet. How far is Dahlia for me? 60 feet. One more roll. 19 total. It was nat 20, but I have a negative one. 16 total. 17. Leuven, you feel your arms shaking, burning. Your legs feel like they're on fire as your pitten at the top feels air. You bring it down to get the ledge. Pull, pull, 
get your chest over your torso and you roll exhausted onto the ground. I eventually just stand up and go, Woo! Victory! <laughs> Dahlia, you do not want to fall. You push and push higher and higher. Auric, you are able to keep moving up, up, up. You guys are starting to catch up to each other now. And you can see Leuven go over the edge, just the lip of it right there. It's within reach, almost one final athletics check. One. But it's not in that one. Total of 17. Auric, you start to climb up, and you see Dahlia start to climb. Must have hit something too solid. The pitten doesn't break through. The other one breaks off below, and she is starting to fall again. Another fall. Dahlia, you cling. You dropped maybe 30 feet. So how far down is she? From you, like 60 feet down now. She is now out of your range of your feather fall, Luvin. Dahlia, stay there. We're going to lower a rope to you. Auric, you are at the ledge. You pull yourself up. Your arms are sore, but you're looking at Luvin, who's still, like, kind of peering over the edge to see how Dahlia's doing, who is breathing heavy. Arms are still shaking. I will tie the, the ropes together, tie one in the ends, like, loop it around the pitten. To, to anchor it, and then hand the other end to Cloudfarer. Cloudfarer brings the rope down to you, because they are already up. You do not need to make a check if you hold on to the rope and are hoisted the rest of the way up with their help to help pull you up and your help climbing it. Yes. And that is where we're going to leave this episode for today. Leuven reflects on this adventure in a letter to one of his pen pals. Two. Death is Cromdell. Maneker. Kingdom of Solana. Nebersol Network. Standard Shipping. From... Leuven Cromdell, 15, and Chewy, year 322. Hey, Tethys. A lot's happened since I last wrote you, so here it is in bullet point format. Bullet 1. We entered into lands overrun by abyssal creatures and helped close an abyssal portal. Master Demean left for the abyss on a Staff Federation mission. Rydot tried to steal back his cloak, but, well, I wear it better. Bullet 2. I finished my Cloudfarer prototype, which you saw in my schematics from the last letter. I even flew on its back for a little while. I've since redesigned Cloudfarer to ride on my shoulder instead of the other way around. At Elaine's recommendation, I also updated the color scheme. See enclosed for a mini painting. I hope you like it. Bullet 3. Our group saved our friend Boulder from a relentless attack by another faction in our biggest conflict to date. And just to get this out of the way, I died and was revived during the conflict. Please leave that part out if you share with the rest of the family. Bullet 4. Elaine went her separate way, but guess who joined? Our third cousin, twice removed. Dahlia. She found me just in time to celebrate my birthday. We're going to travel together for a while, so if there are any messages you want to send her, you can send them through me. Bullet 5. And finally, even though Cloudfarer can't carry me into the sky anymore, I now have a way to fly with a potion. I actually just finished field testing it in the elemental plane of Earth, and would be glad to let you experience it the next time I visit. But what about you? How are your studies going? Is anything new on the farm? I miss hearing from you, and I can't wait to be back in network so that I can read what you are up to. Sincerely, Leuven. Thank you guys for listening. Please share us with your friends and follow us on Twitter at Rules As Written. Or check out our website at dndraw.com. And feel free to email any questions you have to Tony the DM at dm at dndraw.com. Also, subscribe and leave us a review or comment anywhere podcasts are found. And please check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash dndraw. Come for the rumble, save for the pummel. If you enjoy the adventures of our characters in Ostia and our show about the rules for 5th edition, support us on Patreon. For just $1 a month, you will get exclusive content and updates. If you're interested in a look behind the curtain of how we keep track of all of our quests, we are going to be releasing our players' to-do list document for each session to all patrons going forward. This includes our plans for which characters need to have a heart-to-heart, -heart, what letters are they writing to family at home, and which NPCs can't be trusted. Beyond that, higher tiers get DMs notes, bloopers from our episodes, and to add an item or NPC to a D&D Raw episode. So we want to give a special shout out to our Adventure Tier and Above patrons. So thank you Waldron, Carol Morris, William McCracken, 
Ryan Rea Vermet, Mike C, Naked and Afraid, Feral Joe, Jeremy Kleinons, and a Linux fan. We are especially grateful to our producer tier patrons who listen to our audio before anyone else to give feedback and shape the final episode. We want to give a special thanks to Christopher Reinhardt for serving as a producer on this episode. Support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash dndraw.